so good morning everyone and uh, welcome to this lecture this is uh, lecture number 1 and uh, we are dealing with uh, <clears throat> emi uh, any idea what is emi you heard uh, this yes in these uh, like there is a emf generated due to magnet magnetic uh, in overlapping or we can say yes what we can say Have you heard that term EMI? Yes, sir. What does it mean? Just tell me. Electromagnetic then. induction. Electromagnetic induction. Okay. What do you mean by electromagnetic induction? I'm just just give me a minute. Okay, so EMI means electromagnetic induction. That is correct. And what is this uh, process of electromagnetic induction? How? What do you mean by this electromagnetic induction? Any idea? An EMF is induced uh, due to change in magnetic intensity or uh, magnetic intensity. Change in Not magnetic flux. Change in magnetic flux. So the first thing that we must understand here is magnetic flux. We have already gone through this magnetic flux. What was magnetic flux? The number of field lines passing through a given cross-section area. The number of magnetic field lines which are crossing through a given cross-sectional area is known as <clears throat> magnetic flux through that area. If I have a small area, let us say, if I have a small area like this, whose area vector ds or da is going like this and this is placed in a magnetic field b the small flux through this area d phi will be equal to b dot da the total flux through this area will be integral of b dot da or simply it will become integral of b into da into cos theta where what is theta theta is angle between area vector and uh, the magnetic field lines of force theta is the angle between uh, area vector and magnetic field lines uh, it's a scalar quantity and the si unit of this scalar quantity is weber we have already gone through this yes or no yes sir now, this is the flux. If there is one coil, if there are n number of coils, then the flux would be? N, in, n into? N multiplied by this uh, flux through one coil. This is magnetic flux. So, note it down fast. Now, remember uh, what type of quantity is magnetic flux? Scalar. Scalar quantity. It can be positive, it can be negative, it can also be zero. When will we call the flux positive? When will we call the flux negative? Any idea? 
when will the magnetic flux be treated as positive greater than 90 right what when theta is greater than 90 then the flux is positive negative when the angle between the area vector and magnetic field is acute less than 90 the flux is positive if it is equal to 90 the flux is zero if it is greater than 90 the flux is negative do we remember it yes sir okay then here comes problem for you do it fast so that we can move ahead a loop of area 0.06 meter square is placed in a magnetic field 1.2 tesla which is plane inclined at an angle of 30 degree with the field direction find the flux length give you 2 minutes to give me the answer so how are you supposed to find out the flux through this would be equal to b into a into cos theta how much is b the magnetic field is equal to 1.2 tesla area of the loop is 0.06 and the plane is inclined at an angle of 30 degree to the field direction plane this plane is at an angle of 30 degree with the field direction so if i draw this plane this plane is like this the magnetic field is like this at an angle of 30 degrees which angle we should take as theta we should take a like normal to that plane and field so this is the area vector the angle between the area vector and magnetic field is not 30 degree it is in fact 60 degrees 60 degrees so that is what you had to remember that theta in this case is actually equal to 60 degrees that is the answer that we were looking at so you multiply it by cos of 60 and you end up with your answer do we understand this yes sir <clears throat> this is the next question i'll give you 2 minutes to solve it so how do you get the answer for this uh, you just have to take the dot product yes or no yes sir just have to take the dot product once you get the dot product you should be able to find out the answer yes or no yes sir this is the next question i'll give you 2 minutes to give me the answer yes it is in the first case what is the answer zero sir in the first case the answer is zero as you can see the magnetic field is along uh, x axis and one component is along y axis minus y axis but this area vector is actually along z axis if you take the dot product whatever you do you will get the answer as zero so the answer is zero in this case second case second case it is bh into sc second case you can see one component of uh, magnetic field is like this the other component of magnetic field is like this the area vector is going in this direction if you take the dot product one dot product with y will be coming as zero the other dot product will be coming at bh into s and that is the answer third case in third case it is minus bvs one component of magnetic field is like this the second component of magnetic field is like this area vector is going like this if you take the dot product with the h horizontal component it is zero if you take the dot product with the vertical component it will be minus bv into s and uh, that is the answer that we are looking at you understand this yes sir give you 2 minutes to note this down note this on everyone we have understood this now let us uh, move ahead and uh, 
write uh, the definition of electromagnetic induction or EMI. What is this EMI? Now, whenever, as soon as Orsted uh, discovered that, uh, what was Orsted discovery? What was Orsted experiment? It's uh, an elect uh, current carrying condu conductor has a magnetic field around it. A current carry conductor creates what? Magnetic field. A current carrying conductor creates a magnetic field around it. So basically, a current can create magnetic field. A current creates magnetic effect. If you have a current carrying wire, it can create magnetic field. Now, as soon as people realize, scientists realize that current can create magnetic field, they also started to think, is the reverse of this possible? What do you mean by reverse of this? Magnetic field also can induce electricity, current. What is the reverse? Magnetic field can also create a current. The reverse is can a magnetic field also create electric current and that is how experiments were conducted on this particular thing. Can magnetic field create current? And two of the scientists by the name of Faraday and uh, Henry, they did a lot of work on this field, whether current can be created by magnetic field and they came to know that it is possible. How is that possible? So, how is that possible? Any idea? How does magnetic field create current? How did they find it out? They conducted a series of experiments. And with those experiments, they concluded that magnetic field can also create current. What were those experiments? Any idea? Sir, uh, like coil and bar magnet. Coil and bar magnet. What about coil and bar magnet? Like they have, uh, there is a coil and uh, they have moved that bar magnet. So, they have a coil and they put a magnet, stationary magnet. And they assume that uh, this is a galvanometer. You remember galvanometer? Yes, sir. A galvanometer can detect even very small amounts of current. They bring a magnet near a coil. They imagine that, you know, if I bring a magnet near a coil, the galvanometer might show deflection, but the galvanometer does not show any deflection. Then what did they do? This is, was Faraday's experiment. And what did they do next? They moved the coil. They started moving the coil. As soon as they started moving the coil, in this case, the north pole of the coil was moved here the galvanometer started to show deflection. When they move the coil in the opposite direction, then what would have happened? When they move the coil in the opposite direction, the deflection was in the opposite sense. If in one first case, the deflection was along right. In the second case, what the, the deflection was along left. Now, if they change the pole of the magnet, instead of bringing the north pole closer, if they bring the south pole closer, the deflection was in the reverse side. Are we able to understand what I am saying here? Yes, sir. 
So these were the experiments that were conducted in different different cases, and we saw that whenever the whenever there was relative motion, whenever there was relative motion between the magnetic field or the source of the magnetic field and the coil, and EMF is induced in the coil. Now, how is this EMF produced? Because of this magnet, it creates magnetic field and that has, that creates a magnetic flux. If the magnetic flux is constant, when there is no relative motion, when the magnetic flux is constant, there is no induced EMF. But if the flux keeps on changing with time, then we have an induced EMF in the coil. Because of that induced EMF, a current is produced in the coil. This phenomena came to be known as electromagnetic induction. Do we understand this? Yes. Sir. So you don't have to draw this diagram. This, um, this diagram is just for understanding. You can draw it quickly. What are the conclusions that you have to understand? Whenever there is a relative motion, between the coil and the magnet, there was EMF induced in the coil. Whenever flux linked with the coil was changing with time, EMF was induced in the coil. This phenomena came to be known as the phenomena of electromagnetic induction. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Okay, since we understand this, we can now move on to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. We can divide it into two laws. The first law of uh, the first Faraday law states that whenever the flux linked with a coil changes with time, an EMF is induced in the coil. And this EMF will be induced as long as the flux keeps on changing with time. This you can state as the first law. The second law is the value of this induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux. Or I can write this EMF which is induced in the coil is equal to minus N d phi by dt. Where what is n? Number of turns in coil. If d phi by dt is the rate of change of flux with one coil, n is the number of coils. So minus n d phi by dt will be the total rate of change of flux. It is negative of the rate of change of flux with coil this negative sign the value of this negative sign is given by the lens law so we will understand it when we understand len uh, uh, when we understand lens law right now we are going to understand faraday's law and what does faraday's law states whenever the flux linked with a coil it changes with time and emf is induced in the coil this statement is known as Faraday's first law. The value of this induced EMF is equal to minus N d phi by dt. The negative sign is explained by the Lenz law. This is known as Faraday's second law. Do we understand this? I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Whenever we are writing uh, Faraday's law like this, uh, this is the instantaneous EMF induced in the coil. EMF at any particular instant. This is the EMF 
produce at any particular instant. If I find, if I have to find out the average EMF over an interval of time, the average EMF, how will I find the average EMF? That will be equal to minus N into total change in flux divided by total time. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Anyone understands this? Yes. Okay. This is the instantaneous EMF and this is the average EMF. Now, if this circuit is closed, if the circuit is closed, then what will happen? Then a current is induced in the coil. This current is known as the induced current. What is the value of this induced current? It will be equal to induced EMF divided by R. What is this R? This R is the resistance of the total circuit. So it becomes minus N by R D phi by DT. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This is the incentive. First, listen to me. Do I'll give you enough time to write. Listen to me. Don't listen to me. Listen to me. I'll give you enough time to write. I'll give you enough time. This is the instantaneous current induced in the coil. If someone asks you what is the average current induced in the coil, the average current induced in the coil will be minus N by R D phi by DT. This induced current or this induced EMF is directly proportional, is inversely proportional to time. More the time, less is the induced EMF or less is the induced current. If we think about the charge that flows through the coil, the charge that flows through the coil will be integral of I into dt. It is integral of I into dt, so it becomes integral of N by R into d phi by dt into dt. dt dt will get cancelled, so it becomes minus N by R into the change in flux. That means charge that flows through the circuit does not depend on time. The same charge will flow no matter the time that it takes to change the flux. The charge flowing through the circuit only depends on how much the flux has changed. It does not depend on how much time it has taken to change the flux. Do we understand this? Current and EMF depend on time. The charge flowing through the circuit does not depend on time. Now I'll give you time to note this down. Let me now... Uh, give you a couple of questions. Okay. Okay, let me give a question. The flux linked with a coil. Oh, let's give it in black color. The flux linked with a coil is given by two T square minus three T plus one Weber. Find, find the current and EMF, E means EMF at time T is equal to two seconds. That is the first question. Find number two average current and average EMF and charge flown and charge flown
from 0 to 2 seconds the resistance of the coil the resistance of the coil can be taken as 5 ohms so you have a flux linked with a coil the resistance of the coil is 5 ohms you have to find the current and emf in the coil at 2 seconds you have to find the average current and average emf and the charge flown through the coil from 0 to 2 seconds i hope the question is clear I'll give you 2 minutes to give me the answer so how are you supposed to do this you have to just find out the emf emf is minus n d5 by dt here the flux that is linked with the coil is given you can take the number of coils number of turns as one or you can take this as the total flux doesn't matter so what will be the emf induced negative sign only indicates negative sign only indicates the direction of induced emf so let us forget about the negative sign is given by Lenz law. When we understand Lenz law, then we'll understand this negative sign. We just do the derivative of this. So what will we get when we do the derivative of this? We can take the negative sign outside. Yes. It is a uh, 40 plus uh, 40 minus 3, sir. Minus of 4, 3 minus 3. So at time t is equal to 2 seconds, you can put the value and you can get Five. the answer. Yes. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. To find the uh, current at 2 seconds, you just divide E by R. So it becomes minus 4T minus 3 divided by 5. That is the current at the given time. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. To find the average current, you have to find the average EMF. And to find the average EMF, you have to do minus N into change in flux divided by total time yes or no yes sir how do you do it you find the initial flux initial flux is at time t is equal to zero initial flux is one yes or no and the final flux is you put time as a zero so you can write it as minus of phi final minus phi initial divided by time yes or no Yes, sir. How much you are getting here? Did you do it this way or not? Yes, sir. <clears throat> to get the average current, you divide the average EMF divided by R. Yes or no? Yes, sir. That's it. To get the charge which has flown through the circuit, you find minus N into del phi by r yes or no yes sir do this you will end up with your answer do we understand this yes sir anyone got the answer yes sir okay Okay, we can do this question then. The ends of a search coil having 20 turns, area of cross section 1 centimeter square and resistance 2 ohms is connected to a galvanometer of resistance. 40 ohms. The plane of coil is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the direction of magnetic field of intensity is given. It is quickly pulled out of a region to a region of zero magnetic field. Find the charge that flows through the galvanometer. So how are we supposed to do this? You have to find the 
charge flowing charge flowing is a total flux divided by r i am not putting the negative sign because negative sign only tells us the direction yes or no yes sir. the final flux is zero yes or no and you forgot yes the final flux is zero we understand this yes sir we just have to find out the initial of flux what is the initial flux number of turns is n area is 1 cm square so 1 into 10 to the power of minus 4 magnetic field is 1.5 what is the angle between the magnetic field vector and area vector 60 degrees sir cos of 60 is half yes or no yes sir divided by the total resistance total resistance is 42 yes or no yes sir that is the answer you calculate it and you will get your solution do we get this Yes, sir. This one. The radius of a coil decreases steadily at the rate of ten to the power minus two meter per second. A constant and uniform magnetic field of induction, 10 to the power minus 3 Weber per meter square, acts perpendicularly to the plane of the coil. What will be the radius of the coil when the induced EMF is 1 microvolt? All these points, note this down. Okay. Now. Uh, Let me give you one or two more questions. This is the next question. A 10 ohm resistance coil has 1000 turns. It is placed in a magnetic field. The induction is 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 tesla for 0.1 seconds. The area of cross section is 1 meter square for one coil. Find the induced EMF. I'll give you two minutes to solve this. So the answer is 5 volt. Uh, well done. So how are you supposed to do this? Induced EMF is n d5 by dt. Yes or no? time is given as 0.5 seconds so you have to find out the average emf how much is the average emf five volts initial uh, flux was zero then it is kept for um, point uh, one seconds So N B A by T. Do we understand this? Yes. Remember, if a question comes like this, be prepared to solve it. Next one is here. Most of the question that you are going to see probably will fall in this category, and therefore I am giving you as many questions as possible in this particular section. This one, a coil of mean area five hundred centimeter square, having thousand turns, is held perpendicular to a wheel of point four gauss. The coil is turned through one eighty degrees in one by tenth of a second. Find the average EMF. Once you understand average EMF divided by R, you will get average current. You multiply it by time, you will get your uh, flux. Uh, you will get your charge flow. Do we understand this? 
Yes. Two minutes you have to solve this. That is correct. Uh, how are we supposed to do this? We have to find the average EMF that will be equal to total change in flux. I'm not writing the negative sign divided by total time. Yes or no? Yes. Number of turns is 1000. Area is 500 centimeters square. 10 to the power of minus 4. Magnetic field is 0 0.4 Gauss. So you convert it into Tesla. It is turned to an angle of uh, 180 degrees. So initially it was 0. Uh, finally it was 180 degrees. So the change in flux will be multiplied by 2. Yes or no? 2 NBA? Yes. Divided by time will be 1 by 10th of the second. You multiply, divide. And I think the answer you are going to get is 0 0.04 volt. Yes or no? No, yes. Yes. Everyone got this? Yes. This is the next question that you are supposed to solve. Shown in the figure is a circular loop of radius small r and resistance capital R. A variable magnetic field is established inside the coil, switch is closed. Calculate the electrical power. Once you understand the, the premise, it becomes a simple question of electric current. Do we understand this or not? Yes. Solve this one. R power. R. So how are you supposed to uh, find this? You have to find out the induced EMF. How do you find out the induced EMF? Minus D5 by DT. You differentiate this uh, flux. How do you differentiate this flux? You take the area out and you differentiate magnetic field. Do we understand this? Yes. You differentiate magnetic field. So you will have pi R square into B naught into E raised to the power minus T multiplied by minus 1. Yes or no? Yes, sir. At time t is equal to 0, you can find out the induced EMF will be equal to B0 into pi r square. Yes or no? Yes, sir. You have to find out the power. So you can do just E square by r and you will end up with your power. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So what we have seen here is no matter what you do, if you have... If you have a EM, uh, if you have a flux which is changing with time, that uh, changing flux with time will uh, give rise to an EMF, and if the circuit is complete, a current will flow and a charge will flow. Do we understand this with all these examples? Understood, sir. Now, what we'll try to do is we'll try to move on and try to understand what does that negative sign indicate. And to understand the meaning of that negative sign, we must understand what is known as the Lenz law. And Lenz law is very simple. What is Lenz law? What does this Lenz law state? This law is based on the concept of law of conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to other. So what does this law state? This law state that the direction of induced EMF or the direction of induced current would be such that it always opposes the cause which produces it. It will always try to oppose the cause which produces it. So for example, if this... Uh, if this, uh, if this uh, flux is uh, produced by an increasing, uh, if this EMF is produced by a flux which is increasing, it will try to decrease the flux. Do we understand this? Yes. If EMF is induced, by an increasing flux, it will try to decrease it.
and vice versa. Do you understand the meaning of vice versa? Yes. Yes. Yes or no? If the EMF is induced by motion of a magnet, it will try to oppose it. Do we understand this? So basically, whatever is causing this EMF to be induced, the EMF which is induced will always try to oppose it. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. I'll give you two minutes to note this down and then we'll try to see some examples and see the direction of induced EMF. Now we can see <clears throat> some examples and try to understand what will be the direction of induced uh, EMF? And I'll try to show it to you with this uh, table. And I hope uh, you are able to understand it. Once we understand this table, we should be uh, good enough. Now, let us first take the example of this uh, magnet which is moving and we can try to understand it in different different ways now there are four different cases uh, in the first case you can see the north pole of the magnet is moving towards the coil do we understand this yes now this flux will be produced by the magnet which is coming towards you you have to oppose it so what you do you will have to move the magnet away from you yes or no yes so basically what you have to do is this coil has to create north pole because if north and north are in front, the coil will repel the magnet. Yes or no? Yes. If this coil has to create north pole, you can write this uh, north pole in this fashion. We north pole in this fashion. So if you write north pole in this fashion, the current would be in anti-clockwise direction. Do we see this? Yes. You have to create north pole. For a coil to create north pole, this is the north pole. The current should be moving like this. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. North pole. Do we understand this? Remember the magnetic moment of a coil. This was the north pole. Do we remember this? Yes, sir. Similarly, if the north pole is going away from you, you have to create south pole. Yes or no? South pole ka S can be written in this fashion. South pole means this part. So this part means the current has to be clockwise. Do we understand this? If you have to create north pole, it has to be anti-clockwise current. If you have to create clockwise, uh, if you have to create south pole, it has to be a clockwise current. If the south pole is coming towards you, you have to create a south pole. If the south pole is going away from you, you have to create a north pole. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Okay, then we can see uh, some more uh, <clears throat> examples where we can understand what will be um, the direction of induced EMF or the direction of induced current. Let me take uh, this example first. Suppose we have a region like this. And in this region, you have a magnetic field B, which is going inside. You have five different positions of a loop, which is moving through this space a b c d and e these are the five uh, stages through which this uh, loop is moving through this uh, space now let us uh, talk about the position a and let us try to find out whether there is any induced emf or not if there is any induced emf we will try to find out the direction of the induced emf 
Now, whenever we are uh, encountered with a question to find out the direction of induced EMF, we ask ourselves some questions. And we then we try to find out the answers. And depending on our answers, we find out the direction of the induced EMF. The first question do we ask here is, is there a flux linked with the coil in case number one? No. There is no flux linked. If there is no flux linked, flux cannot change because there is no flux. How will it change? If there is no flux change, there is no induced EMF. There is no induced EMF. There is no current. So we don't have to find anything. In this first case, there is no induced current. There is no direction of current. Do we understand this? Yes. Let us now move on to the second case, case number B. We ask ourselves first question, is there a flux link with the coil? Yes. Coil is moving inside. Inside there is magnetic field. The coil also has an area. So there is a flux link with the coil. Then we ask ourselves this question, is this flux changing with time? The coil is moving inside the region. Is the flux changing with time? Yes. Why is the flux changing with time? Sir, uh, like area of uh, B is coming into this. So area is changing, therefore the flux is changing. Then we ask ourselves the next question. Is the flux increasing or is the flux decreasing? Decreasing. The flux is increasing, yes or no? Yes. So the lens law says oppose it. How you can change, how you can oppose an increasing flux? by trying to decrease it. Now, the flux does not have any direction, but just to understand the direction of induced EMF, we'll assume that the direction of flux is same as the direction of field. So in which direction is the flux increasing? The flux is increasing in the inside direction. So I have to decrease the flux. Flux is in the the magnetic field is in the inside direction and the flux is increasing. I have to decrease it. So what do I need to do? I need to create magnetic field in the opposite direction. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. To create magnetic field in the opposite direction, the magnetic field should come out. To create magnetic field to come out, how will the direction of current in the coil be? Anticlockwise. It would be anticlockwise. So in this case, the direction of induced EMF would be anticlockwise. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Let us move on to the third uh, example, third case, C case. We ask ourselves questions. The first question we ask, is there a flux link with the coil? Yes, sir. Second question we ask, is the flux changing with time? No, sir. The flux is not changing with time. If the flux remains constant with time, the induced EMF is going to be zero. So there will be no EMF induced when the coil is completely inside. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. We move on to the fourth case, case number D. We again ask, ask ourselves the same question. Is there a flux linked in the coil? Yes. Is the flux changing with time? Yes, sir. Increasing with time or decreasing with time? Decreasing with time. Decreasing with time. So we need to increase it. How we can increase it? By creating in the same direction. By creating magnetic field in the same direction. To create magnetic field in the same direction, inside direction, your current should become clockwise. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. In the fourth case, in the fourth case, is there any flux link with the coil? No, sir. There is no flux link with the coil, so nothing happens. Do we understand this? Yes. So this is how you can find out the direction of induced EMF in various cases. Let me give you another example to find out the direction of induced EMF or the direction of induced current. 
you have a current carrying wire and you have a coil moving like this, what would be the direction of induced EMF in the coil if there is any induced EMF in this case? Sir, it is a clockwise direction. Why it is clockwise direction? This uh, this uh, mag uh, this current is creating magnetic field in the inward direction. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. The coil is moving away. The coil is moving away. Therefore, the flux is decreasing. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. You have to increase the flux. How you can increase the flux? You can increase the flux by creating field in the same direction. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, sir. So that is why the answer is the induced EMF would be, uh, the induced current would be in the clockwise sense. Now, the same question. Same question. If I make the velocity in place of velocity here, I make the velocity here like this, then what happens? Do not look at the direction which is drawn there. If I make the velocity like this in this direction, then what will be the direction of induced current in this case? Anti-clockwise direction. Now the flux is increasing. We have to decrease it. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. If instead of the pink direction, I make it to move in the upward direction, then what is the answer then? Zero, sir. Why it is zero? Sir, as uh, flux is not changing. Flux is not changing, so nothing will happen. Induced EMF or induced current would be zero. Do we understand this? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. This case. Now the coil is stationary, but I'm increasing the current in the wire. What will be the direction of induced EMF in the circular coil? If there is any. So I'll give you a couple of questions. And then I'll give you two minutes. So that you can solve them on your own. And then we will uh, discuss them together. Okay. So I'll be giving you a couple of minutes. With uh, all these five questions, I think. These five questions. I'll give you two minutes. You can find out the direction of induced EMF and then we will discuss them. So what will be the direction of induced current in the in this case? Case number two. Sir, it is uh, anti-clockwise direction. The current is increasing, so the flux is increasing. We have to decrease the flux. So it has to be in the anti-clockwise direction. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Next case. Sir, A is negative and B is positive. What is the nature of plates of the capacitor? Now, you have to find out how uh, how current will flow. Current will flow in the clockwise sense, yes or no? Yes, sir. Current will flow in the clockwise sense. That means this plate has to be positive and this plate has to be negative. Okay. Or now uh, the plate is getting charged like this. So in that case, you can say that this will be the positive plate and that will be the negative plate. Okay. Fourth case. Next one. Velocity is increasing. So what will happen? Remember, it's an electron beam. So what will be the direction of magnetic field? Is it inside or is it outside? Inside, sir. 
Hmm. If it is our, if it was a positive field, positive charge, then it will be outside. This will be inside, and the velocity is increasing, so the flux is increasing. You have to decrease it. Yes or no? Yes, sir. To decrease it, it has to be in the anti-clockwise sense. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. In this case, there will be no flux, and in this case, it will be clockwise. Do we understand? Yes, sir. Everyone got this. Uh, Yes, sir. Okay. Let me see what we can do next. Okay. Now we can uh, move ahead since we have seen how to find out the direction. We have seen in general how to find out the EMF induced. Let us do them case by case, changing flux in different different ways. Now, how can I change flux? Now, if I look uh, very closely, flux is N B A cos theta. N, if we are talking about N as number of turns, B is the magnetic field, A is the area of the coil, and theta is the angle in the magnetic field and the coil now how can i change flux well i can change n number of turns i can change b magnetic field i can change a the area or i can change theta the angle between um, magnetic field and area vector do we understand this yes sir Okay, so now we will uh, do it uh, case by case. If I change the number of turns, that will not make a good question. The number of turns in first case is 100, then I make it 200. You just have to find out the change in the number of turns. No matter whatever I do, if I change flux by changing any of these quantities or changing any two quantities or changing any three quantities, I'm always going to induce an EMF and because of that induced EMF, I will have an induced current. Do we understand this? Yes. Okay. Now let us move on to the first case, case number A by changing. Theta, which is the most uh, important case because this is how. This is how your emf is generated in most of the cases so how are you going to change the, this uh, angle theta you are going to rotate the coil do we understand this yes sir you are going to rotate the coil in a magnetic field with a constant velocity 
you are going to rotate your coil in a magnetic field with a constant velocity let us call that velocity as omega if you rotate if you rotate your coil in a magnetic field you will have a emf that would be induced in the coil yes or no yes sir that induced emf you will have an induced emf and if the circuit is complete you will have a current flowing in the coil yes or no no yes yes sir so this is the simplest way and this is how the next chapter when i say next chapter that is the chapter on alternating current your alternating current or ac voltage is produced by a coil which is rotating in a magnetic field i'm trying to get a diagram where i can make you understand if it is not there i will have to make it this is how coil is rotating uh, let me just draw the diagram myself uh, instead of drawing it this way what i am going to do is i am going to draw this do you understand what i have drawn here yes i have drawn a coil and i have drawn the area vector of the coil the magnetic field is also in this direction so initial angle between b and a is how much zero then i start rotating this coil in this fashion with a constant angular velocity omega if i start to rotate this coil with a constant angular velocity omega at any in any position when the coil makes an angle theta it starts to rotate and it tries to make an angle theta the flux through this coil will be given by n b a cos theta yes or no yes or it can be written as n b a cos of omega t yes or no yes to find out the emf induced in the coil i have to find out the negative rate of change of this one yes or no negative sign only indicates the direction so it will become n b a omega sin omega t do we understand this yes sir this n number of turns will be constant this b magnetic field will be constant this a area will be constant and i am moving with a constant angular velocity so everything is a constant so i can write it as e not sin omega t where e not becomes the maximum value of induced emf do we understand this yes sir this type of emf is known as the alternating emf because it alternates it's in the form of a sine wave and this is your alternating emf and the current produced because of this is known as alternating current do we understand this yes sir to find out the current in the circuit you just divide this instantaneous emf by the resistance r and you will get your alternating current do we understand this yes sir i'll give you 2 minutes to note this down well uh, let me give you this question um again this question is taken from your scv um again this question just involves the rotation of the coil and i think we have done a question of uh, this nature before also but since we are doing it this case specific so let us try to do this question a circular coil radius if you don't want to do the numerical part you can take the radius as r number of turns as n or capital n uniform magnetic field can be taken as b is placed in a space in a direction parallel to the axis of the loop the coil is now turned through a diameter to an angle of uh, 60 degrees you can take that as 60 degrees or you can take it as theta instead of taking time as uh, 0.1 seconds you can take the time as t find the average emf if the coil is a closed one and the resistance you can take the resistance as r find the net charge and the
find the net charge that flows through the coil. Do we understand this? This is the same question. Coil is turned. Do we understand? Angle is changing. Do we understand this? Yes. I give you two minutes to give me the answer. So if I look at the question in the initial case, the area vector of the coil and magnetic field were in the same direction. Yes or no? Yes, sir. In the final scenario, in the final scenario, the coil is like this and the magnetic field still remains like this. Yes, sir. And this angle is 60 degrees. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So average EMF is total change in flux divided by total time. What is the final flux? N, N can be taken common. B, B is also common. A is also common. Yes, sir. So N, B into pi r square, the final flux is? Root 3 by 2 minus, uh, sir. Uh, root 3 by 2 minus 1, sir. Cos 60 degree, my dear friends. 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 Divided by hours, divided by time, that is the average EMF induced. To find out the total charge, you just have to divide. Uh, you don't have to divide by resistance here. You have to divide by resistance here. If you make mistakes like this, no one will forgive you. You cannot forgive yourself. If you don't remember and understand the values of angle, don't understand what is the angle. You can't understand if it has turned to 60 degrees, the angle becomes 60 degrees. How did the hell you get 30 degrees there? You cannot get 30 degrees. That's only in your imagination that you got it. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Please be attentive. Please be careful. You will not get a second chance. The next attempt is your last chance of doing anything. You cannot let it go like this. This one is the next question. I hope to get a better result this time around. Similar question. Again, I will try to convert this question into a numerical, from numerical to alphanumerical. The number of turns can be taken as N, magnetic field is B, the angular velocity is 300 revolutions per minute. You can, um, you can call it, uh, yeah, you can call it 300, 300 only. The area of the coil, you can take it as A, the distance of the coil, you can take it as R. Let's see. If you can do better things here. Find the average EMF developed in half a turn from a position where the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field. That uh, looks okay. In the first case, the magnetic field and area vector In the first case, the magnetic field and the area vector both are in the same direction. In the second case, the magnet, the area vector has turned by 180 degrees 
and in the third case the area vector has come at the same position so in the first case case number 1 the uh, initial flux phi 1 is nb into a in the second case it becomes minus nba in the third case it again becomes nba yes or no Everyone understands this? Yes, sir. Okay. So now you can easily find out the change in flux. Once you get the change in flux, you will be able to find out the induced EMF and so on. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Everyone got this? Yes, sir. Okay, then. Then you can uh, see some cases where there is no... I forgot to do that cases where there is no induced emf so you can just look at those cases where there is no emf induced uh, some of these cases may come as question in your exam For example, this case, you have a solenoid. Hmm. We'll do this case first. This case where you have coil and the magnet both moving with the same velocity. You can see there is no relative velocity. Do we understand this? Yes. There is no relative motion. If there is no relative motion, there will not be any change rate of change of flux. There will be no change in flux, whether they are moving in one direction this way or they are moving in the other direction this way. Do we understand this? Yes. At the same time, if you start to rotate them like this, you start to rotate them like this, there will not be any flux linked with each other. There will not be any change of flux, so there will not be any induced EMS. Do you understand this? Note down these cases. So similarly, uh, we have seen these cases as well. Uh, if you have a loop moving inside a magnetic field, as we have seen that the EMF induced is zero because there is no change in flux. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Similarly, if you have a circular or a rectangular coil rotating like this. The flux is constant. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So EMF induced in the entire thing is zero. Uh, this is a circle. Do you understand this circle? Yes. Circular thing. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. You have one coil like this. I mean, I've seen questions coming from uh, this part. So that's why I'm giving you all the, the all these are questions. I hope you understand this. Yes or no? Yes, sir. One coil, the, the plane of the coil are perpendicular. So whatever have happened in the first coil, the flux linked to the second coil does not change. Do we understand this? 
Yes. Sir. You can call the first coil as a primary coil. You can call the second coil as the secondary coil. Primary, secondary, transformer. We will be doing transformers in the next chapter. Do we understand this? I'll give you five minutes to note it down. Yes. So uh, what we have done today in today's class is that we have seen what is magnetic flux, number of magnetic field lines passing through a given section. If this magnetic flux keeps on changing with time and EMF is induced in the coil, Remember, this EMF is induced whether the circuit is closed or not. But if the circuit is closed, you will have a current flowing through the coil and you have a charge flowing through the coil. The current and the EMF that are produced in the coil is inversely proportional to time. Less the time, more the EMF. If I do a flux change quickly, more EMF will be induced. But the charge flowing does not depend on the time. It only depends on the change in flux divided by the radius, uh, divided by the resistance. More than 99% of the question would come from this part that we have done today. The rest one of the percent, we have also seen how we can change flux by changing the area between the coil and the magnetic field. This is how most of your alternating current is produced that you get in your homes. You have a coil that rotates in a magnetic field and you get induced EMF, AC EMF, alternating EMF, and that produces alternating current. In the next class, we will see flux is NBA cos theta. We have changed theta. Now, in the next class, we will change A. What do you mean by A? Area. We will change the area first. That change of area will be known by the motional EMF. 99.99% of the question will be covered. 0.001% of the question will be coming from the third part, which is the change in magnetic field. So, we will wind it out tomorrow this entire part of emf and then we'll move emi and we'll move on to induction what i would suggest is i have covered a lot of topic today you have the sheets with you did you have the do you have the sheets for emi yes sir please solve questions from that sheet most of the questions are going to come from either lens law or your change in flux that general cases 99 percent of questions that told you are covered. I'll see you in the next class tomorrow. Take care. God bless you. Thank